Hi guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel. And today I thought we would do a reading on what is 2020 bringing for you and also give a little bit of advice. So I've got these three mandalas here that I got from my husband who is super interested in Buddhism. So if you need another minute to go ahead and pick your pile, pause the video here. Otherwise, we're going to jump right in. Pile one, pile two, and pile three. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Pile number Okay, let's see. Pile number one. So I am going to, each one of these has a mantra and a little blurb on the back, each one of these mandalas, so I'll read it. Um, it's so brief. I don't like it when people read things, so I'll keep it short. But this is a mantra of protection. And um, the mantra is Sreed Paho, and I'll just put this here in case you want to look it up. Um, but Sreed Paho is a powerful Tibetan astrological mandala carried for protection. Manshuri, top center, holds the sword of wisdom that cuts through confusion and dispels obstacles. The turtle in the lower left-hand corner symbolizes long life. Meditating on Sreed Paho enlightens and where, heightens awareness and protects body and mind from negative influences. So right away, I can see that um, that theme of... Uh, protecting the mind and body from negative influences is something that is happening for you in 2020. I can see that 2019, you're, you know, at least with like money and work and stuff, I don't think it was very pleasant for you. I think that you had a lot of burdens, a lot of worries. You felt, um, you know, kind of trapped and not your best self in those areas. And I can also see that just kind of identifying weasels is what I want to say. You know, people who do not have your best interest at heart. Um, also behaviors that haven't really been serving you and have kind of kept you trapped in a, a loop, especially with money, you know, and the ways that you're, uh, like the ways that you're presenting yourself to the world and maybe at work or things like that um, in love situations. You're really going to be looking at what's working for you and what's not in order to protect yourself and give yourself the best foot forward. I can also see in 2020, you're going to be focusing on, um, on yourself, on your internal self. And you might be a little more reserved with what you share with people, especially when it comes to like your hopes and your dreams and your plans for things. Um, and it might not make sense to people. You might kind of confuse people right out the bat, but I do see that you're focused on your own empowerment and achieving your own goals. And you're really like, you're kind of not playing around in 2020 
where you are, I feel like you, you've kind of identified negative patterns and you're wanting to step forward in strength. You're getting really real with yourself so that you give yourself the best shot at achieving your goals. There's something else that I wanted to say. Okay, yeah. With the sword of wisdom, right? That cuts through confusion and dispels obstacles. I mean, that is exactly what you're focused on, right? Cutting through confusion and dispelling obstacles here. Um, I clarified the seven of swords with the seven of wands. So there is like, you're going to maybe have to, it's going to feel uncomfortable maybe at first where you feel like people are against you. A lot of times when we start bringing forth a different aspect of our personalities or when we start to, um, you know, nurture like our own strength, right? Especially if you like, if you're used to going along to get along and you might, I do think that you are kind of used to going along, to get along. That's just the, the vibes that I'm getting. We'll look more into that here, but like you, I feel like you're a person who like, you'll take on the burden for yourself if you have to, because you are a pro-social person. You care about the group, you care about the community, you want to do your part, but it's almost to a fault. And people might not immediately understand when that behavior starts to change. It's like kind of, oh, what's going on with so-and-so? They're really starting to assert themselves. They're putting up boundaries. You're going to start drawing boundaries for yourself. And it's going to protect your energy more and it's necessary and it's good. And it's, um, I'm getting that mean girls quote where it's like, when you get bit by a snake, you have to suck the poison out. And you actually are not supposed to suck the poison out. If that is not medical advice, um, you're really not supposed to do that anymore. Um, this channel is not about giving medical advice. So let me just put that out there. It's just the phrase, right? Um, it's like getting rid of the toxins in your own life is a better way of saying that. <laughs> um, that's what I meant is that you are really starting to look at the ways that your own behavior has um, not served you. And it's not even like that it's your fault. It's, you know, we all get socialized in certain ways. And a lot of that socialization is how to make ourselves small, not put up a fight. And um, yeah, so I think that you're learning how to stand up for yourself. And it might not be the easiest thing. And you might, you know, fumble the ball a little bit. But um, but ultimately that's what you're working on in 2020 in order to get some kind of an equilibrium. I do see that part of it. I, I, I think it's a little fun, you know, where, when you start to kind of see how people are reacting to you and that, um, you know, oh, all of a sudden people realize that they can't take advantage of you. That's especially towards the end of the year. I think that that's going to be the energy that you're in. I mean, look at this energy. We have the high priestess, which is a, um, major arcana card and we have the king of wands here. This is like Badao right? This is, um, it's a balance of masculine and feminine energy here. And with the high priestess, you know, it's the maiden, the mother and the crone. So I think that you, you kind of master bringing out certain aspects of your personality where it's appropriate, right? Like, you know, when you can let loose and be fun and let your guard down and, you know, maybe give a little more than you're usually giving, but you also know when you need to stand firm or maybe even be silent you're definitely mastering those things. You're also working on your spirituality with the King of Wands and the High Priestess here. You are really making strides in your per or in your personality. <laughs> no, in your um, spirituality. And you also might be taking more of a leadership role in some kind of spiritual element. You might, um, you know, start teaching yoga or maybe you open up a little bit. Um, I don't necessarily see opening up. I do see intense study though. Um, like, yeah. I just think that a lot of this growth and you, I, I think that you're, I get the, the sense that you're a moral person and like, yeah, you want to be strong. You want to stand up for yourself, but you, that folds into a larger image that, and goal that you have for yourself. And it's definitely, um, uh, rooted in your spiritual beliefs and, and how you're viewing the world. And you are a person, you might revisit some of those spiritual beliefs to see like, if when you read a certain passage or, um, you know, if you re-engage with, with whatever spiritual tradition, if you get something different from it now, right? Because spiritual texts, right? They're living texts. And that's the thing. That's the beautiful thing about them is like you reread it and you get something different than you got before. And that's, that's what prompts us along, um, along our spiritual journey. I definitely see some manifesting energy here. Like, big manifesting energy, especially again, towards the end of the year. I think the first part of the year, you're definitely going to, it's going to be about figuring out, like you're resituating some things. 
so that you put yourself in a really good position and also kind of learning learning some lessons about how how you're going to resituate yourself but you are going to master that and um also i think that you're going to be there's something about education and like you could be going back to school you could be taking some kind of new class um and it, it could be spiritual or not spiritual but i definitely think that if you do um even if you just take a single class you know or if you're decide thinking about going back to school you might go back to school in 2020 but um the pursuit of knowledge is going to help you achieve your goals in 2020 and it's going to help people see you in a different light or, um, yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. I just, I think that you will step into your power and I think you've been looking to. So, um, let's go over here. So I've got money, work, and love. So, because money and work are just kind of separate for me. Um, so again, like with money and work, you have the 10 of swords in the past position and the 10 of wands. I don't think that money and work have been your friends. Um, there could have been like, oh, well, with money, you could have felt betrayed in some way. Somebody, maybe you, maybe you did have a big theft. Maybe there was like some identity theft or you left a relationship and, um, where you felt like it was like unfair or maybe this is just the energy of bills. Like something is just, you're, you're feeling really burdened by bills and things like that. You know, this is just the energy of feeling burdened. And again, with work with the 10 of wands, I do think that you were, you're making strides towards your goal. Like you're kind of paying your dues is what I'm getting. And you're really pushing through a lot now. So maybe like you did, you were in a new job or you're in a new field or you are like finishing up your education or something like that where you know that you're going through a bit of a rough time, but that it's all worth it. Like it's, it's for the end result, right? Like she's climbing this mountain here and I'm looking at this as kind of skills. I do think that you maybe you were learn in a, you were, you're gathering, you're in the gathering phase, right? Or were there was just some kind of strife so um, currently with money and work I see the page of wands here with money like and then I also for work I see the star so first let's start off with money with the page of wands I think that you might have been again there's this energy of setting goals like you're inspired to set goals and then take action to achieve those goals and the page of wands is somebody who is a starter. Like this is a starter card. And I do like with looking at the train in the background, it's like, how do I build something that's going to last, that's going to really serve me for my whole life? And how do I get there? And how do I, with the salamander here, um, you know, this soaks up the energy of the sun. It's such a totem for the here and now, like in my mind. And fire is definitely a here and now kind of energy. So I think that there is an energy of excitement. I think that you're start, you know, you're trying to take inventory of what you have and where you want to go. And you're excited to start on that journey. You could be um, starting to read things about money and how people, you know, make money, work for them. And that could be the education that, you know, we were talking about over here. But you know, it could be like maybe your stocks from work are starting to invest or, or starting to vest or you're interested in how to invest in the stock market or how to um, invest in like real estate or whatever it is that's your passion. You know, this is not a card of let me just do what everybody else says to do because no, like there's some kind of passion with this, like something that you're driven to do. And I think you're excited for it. And then moving forward with your with money with the six of cups it's like this is it's kind of nostalgic this is interesting to have for money in the future position um you could receive some kind of like inheritance you could be receiving money like i said maybe like your stocks best at work or like i'm just seeing this as someone older like it could be the energy of inheritance it could be like you get money from from a bank or from some something I, I think it's more personal though because the six of cups is a very personal card like friendship it could be from a friend it could be like i don't know go fund me or um something like that where it's like you're getting money from something that you love from something that you from a seed that you've planted long ago something like that it could even be like, I can remember my grandparents being like, remember that bank account that you started when you were six? Well, here it is, you know? And it's like, oh, it could be something like that. So I think that 
this is a really overall it's a good energy for the future with money um, but it's still I do think it's kind of a young energy you could be getting guidance like even money guidance from an older family member from a friend who kind of knows what they're doing I do think that you're getting guidance um, but yeah the six of cups is a really overall good vibe and I think it has to do with it could have to do with friends and family too like your friends and family group. Maybe you start up the project that you start, like your friends and family are the first customers or something like that. So interested to see how like you guys are resonating with that card. So um, the advice for money is to consider your options, right? The seven of cups is, it's a lot of options and it's the energy of Neptune and Neptune is the higher octave of Venus so it's definitely something that you love but it's like transcendental divine love um, Neptune is the planetary ruler of Pisces and Pisces loves the collective like it's it's that collective energy and Vedic is ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter is like that loving of the group kind of energy um, it's also like consider what is good for um, for the world like um, with the six of cups here like if you are planning on doing some kind of investment I feel like you're investing in something that's good for the world and helps your community consider your community is something that's also coming through um I don't know there's definitely something about that and also like don't be don't fall for like get rich quick schemes Understand that like there's a lot of illusions when people talk about money. Also, like maybe maybe this is also telling you that like the people around you maybe don't have as much as they're pretending and that you don't need to pretend. Like just know that um, you know, if someone's like, hey, do this um pyramid, like you know those pyramid things, like selling, you know, those pyramid products and things, like, oh, it's gonna make you all this money. No, it's not. Like, that's an illusion. You know, I don't want to say, let me not say no, it's not, but just understand, like pay attention when things are really murky and you don't have to make a decision when things are murky. This is telling you only make a decision when it's clear to you. And when you, when it feels right, um, you'll know because there could be people that are trying to trick you. I mean, that that's the energy of money in our culture, right? People are always trying to trick us, con us. Even the energy of advertising is like trickery, you know? Um, it's not about whether or not you actually need something. It's about whether or not someone can make you form an emotional attachment to something to spend your money. So I think that's also a thing is like, you know, if you're make sure that's meaningful, like spend your money on things that are meaningful to you and your community, not something that you have, like, it's like an addiction thing, you know? Um, so with work, I see right now you're really standing in your power with the star card here. This is like you're achieving some of your goals. And again, I got that energy with the 10 of wands where it's like it felt like you were paying your dues, but it's starting to pay off now. And definitely in the wheel of fortune in the future, I think that you could get a promotion. It could require a move of some kind, but um, there's going to be a shakeup. But the wheel of fortune is the energy of Jupiter, which is the energy of luck, of benevolence, of expansion. It's a really good change. It's the hand of fate and you know, ultimately it's a balancing energy from the empress to the star. Um, so it's like balancing between like what you're building for yourself. And that's so funny. Oh my gosh. I didn't see this. This is your advice. The empress. Ah, this is great energy for work, whatever it is. This also could be telling you to like take a risk because fate is on your side. Um, Again, I just want to say like that we're, you, everybody watching this is responsible for their own decisions. And so I'm um, not telling you to just, I mean, that a lot of people watch these videos, right? So um, again, be calculating, like know when you have actual evidence, you know, to invest your money. But overall, I'm telling you, like it looks, it does look pretty good um, with work anyways. Like I think you could expect a promotion. I think you could expect a raise, a salary raise. Um, maybe, uh, you know, yeah, just expansion. I'm getting the energy of expansion in work. Like it's looking really, really good. People are looking up to you, especially if you're in a healing kind of a field, if you're a doctor, a therapist, um, something like that. People are really seeing you as a peaceful healing energy. Somebody who makes calm decisions and considers the group. Um, you're also looked at as someone who brings people together, like a community builder. And, um, and also people are seeing your wisdom with a star card here. So, really good energy. 
I think, yeah, really, really solid energy for work there. Um, with love, you're coming from the fool. So I do think that you were single and fancy free. You kind of just, you know, went where the wind took you. You didn't really feel tied down to anything. Um, yeah, this is just like the energy, like you weren't, you weren't putting up any barriers to love as well. You were just kind of, you're standing in your power. You're just, you're having fun. I feel like you're out probably being very social um, or just you have like an openness energy to you, but you're very happy in and of yourself. So now you're the queen of wands, badow, like sexy, magnetic, somebody who's making their dreams come true. Maybe even a little spiritual, a little witchy um, kind of vibes coming off of you, but people are very, very attractive to you. I think that a lot of people think you're out of their league. Um, and you probably are. <laughs> um, but you are somebody that I think a lot of people have crushes on. A lot of people are desiring you. You're, I don't know. There's just like this sexy young female kind of energy. You could also be a sexy young male. Um, it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like you got it going on. Definitely. You got it going on. And as we move into 2020, um, we have the seven of cups. So it's like, again, I think you're going to, I think you have options. I think, and you're trying to decide like who's right for you because I think that you, like again, you have options and you wanna pick the right one. You wanna invest your time in the right one and you are looking for love, but you don't wanna, again, it's the seven of cups, like it's this energy of being deceived. And you might just, I mean, and we do have the seven of swords here in your overall energy for 2020, especially at the beginning. So just be careful, it definitely at the beginning of 2020, you know, like just know that there could be some players in there. Um, but I do think that somebody, there is somebody in your sphere that is out for love and you just might not be able to see that right away. So there's nothing wrong with just resting on your haunches if, um, you know, or, or play in the field if that's what you want. You know, if you want to play the field, go right ahead and play the field. But, um, but yeah, um, I think, I think you are looking for love and I think that, things will become clearer as the year progresses. So there's nothing wrong with giving yourself a little bit of time to kind of sort things out. Let let them, um, I like to watch Shallon Lester and she's always quoting the art of, art of war. And there was one quote in there from Sun Tzu wrote the art of war and it's like, lie in the tall grass and draw them out. You know, you don't have to make a move. You can lie in the tall grass and wait for people to show themselves because not everybody does have your best interest at heart. I do think there is like a lot of competition and they're definitely, I'm just getting like, there might be a snake in your midst that will do anything to kind of get your attention and win, you know, Shannon Lester's always talking about victory over peace, you know, and like in a romantic situation, victory is just, you know, Hey, I got it, you know, and, um, they don't necessarily intend to do anything. Um, so your advice is the six of cups. This is friendship. So maybe the person that maybe you have a little bit of a spark of a crush on somebody that you're already friends with somebody that you've known for a really long time. You might meet somebody when you go home. Um, but I think it's also just saying like, watch people's actions, like see who's really there for you in like a friend kind of a way, you know, like don't necessarily pay attention to all the flirting and like who has the best cologne and who looks sharp every day and who all the other girls or boys, you know, have their eye on. You don't have to pay attention to that. Like pay attention to like who wants to get to know you, who listens when you talk, who's making eye contact with you, who's talking over you and who's like still watching you as you're talking. Um, who likes you as a person, you know, who wants to hang out when you're ugly and in your sweats, you know, who has that kind of energy, who's sweet and like giving, bringing you flowers and not showing up with like, <laughs> I just wanted to say like, it's, you know, let me not say that, you know, who's not let me not say that. I think you get what I'm saying. Like, you know, we can be very fooled by the energy of flirting and the energy of sex. Like look past the energy of sex to the energy of friendship and you'll see who's down for you. I think is what it's trying to say because you have the king of wands and the high priestess in your, towards the end of the year. I do think that you could find yourself in a, in a stable relationship with someone that you are attracted to and with someone who's goal oriented and is set out to like, who is very protective and who set out to, um, like, like that could be your person, you know, um, your relationship might be more private too. Like that could be something, 
Watch people behind closed doors is kind of what I'm getting. So, and you have that truth of wisdom that we were talking about to just cut through nonsense. I think that's the theme of your year is cutting through nonsense. Really, and honestly, like, and maybe this is something that, I feel like this could be fun. Like, have a bubble bath, you know, write down, like, your goals where you just start getting really honest with yourself about, like, do people walk all over you when it comes to money? Like, have you felt victimized in some sort of a way? Like, you're not getting your fair shake when it comes to money. Um, and, and realizing that you're, you, it looks like you're on the precipice of really taking off with your career and with your job. Just, like, really get clear with yourself, you know, about what's working for you and what isn't. So... Yeah, that's what I have for you guys, pile number one. If that resonated, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, I love hearing from you guys. It really honestly makes my day to see comments from you guys. I love it. I just love it when I get a little notification on my phone. Um, so thank you for watching, pile number one. All right, pile number two. Let's see what 2020 has in store for you. Okay, pile number two. So um, this, these mandalas have like a little blurb on the back. It's not long. I don't like it when readers read things. Um, so I will keep this short, but um, I will show this here in case. Um, so we have the mandala of longevity. Um, if you want to look that up, um, because we can write the energy of vibrations really powerful. So if you're into that sort of a thing and you wanted to look up you know, the mandala, I can show this to you in a second. So um, we have the mandala of longevity. And Mateus, the Buddha in the center of the mandala, conveys blessings of long life through symbols of universal harmony and balance. The four colors, red, green, blue, and yellow, represent the four elements of fire, air, water, and earth arising in perfect harmony. Through the grace of Amateus, unlimited compassion, and the creative power of the mandala, human life becomes healthy and joyful. So that's interesting because I was going to... First of all, if you want to spell Amateus, it's right here, and I'll just hold this to the camera so that you can see. Um, and it's interesting because the first card, we have your overall energy for 2020 over here, and the first card is Temperance. And Temperance is all about balance and healing. And I do think that you are trying to balance, especially with all four of the elements and all four of the colors there, you are trying to balance the, the different elements of your life so that you can live just a, your life can feel better in the everyday and that again like there's that phrase of building a life that you don't need a vacation from I definitely see that I also see that you're trying to maybe even um, get into a workout routine um, temperance is a Sagittarian card Sagittarius rules the muscular system so you could be hitting the gym 
Um, you also could be trying to eat better, drink a lot more water. Um, if not, that could just be some advice like of drinking some water. You could be like taking some healing baths with your salts and your crystals and stuff. You're just really trying to get your mind right, you know? Uh, getting into a meditation routine. I just, you're trying to take care of yourself going into 2020. Um, you're trying, you're, you're after balance and healing. And also I think, you know, part of that balance is cultivating friendships. Maybe even reaching out to people that you haven't talked to in a long time. You might hear from somebody that you haven't spoken to in a long time, but you're focused on your relationships. I'm, I'm kind of getting the sense already from this pile. And again, like we'll look more into this, but I, I think that you guys are a little bit more established like you have some life behind you and you are to the place where you can start thinking about these higher order things of balance and friendship right moving forward trying to achieve your goals really taking stock of your life i mean this is all new year's stuff right when we start to try to take stock of our lives and figure out where we're going so there could be a specific person that you want to reach out to it could even be you know, them seeing this is like the grandmother so it could be someone from your family it could specifically be a grandmother um, but also this is the energy of like childhood friends and nostalgia. So, um, maybe you want to take a trip back to your hometown, maybe even, you know, at the beginning of the year or something, um, coming off of the holidays just to reconnect with people. And I think you do have a solid intention of keeping those people in your life. Um, also I'm just noticing up here, we've got the energy of the, the six up here with five being the energy of the human being, maybe strife and struggling and, um, also being scattered, like maybe you have moved away from home and then the energy of the one, like coming back as an individual, you know, like standing in your power and trying to, it's that, that I am energy that you're stepping into and what better, you know, what better energy to have behind you stepping into something as the chariot. Again, I'm kind of seeing travel. You could be traveling around, um, with the chariot card here. This is, I mean, this also could be a lover. I'm just noticing the lingam and the yoni symbol here in the middle, um, which again speaks to balance of the masculine and feminine parts of you. Or again, like this could be that you actually meet this person as like a romantic partner. This is somebody who's very driven. It could be somebody that lives, that does live far away from you that you need to travel to. Um, somebody that's opposite of you. This is also, this is the young king card. Um, and it's the only one where the king is kind of on the move. So you could meet somebody during your travels, uh, somebody that's maybe they're trying to study or they're meeting their goals in some way away from their home. Um, but this is also somebody who is trying to decide what they want for themselves and move in that direction, right? Like kind of make things work for themselves. They're kind of there's that young energy there too, because sexually, like, I think they're, um, the Sphinx is like kind of, kind of starting, it's like the primal nature starting to become human a little bit. So they're, they're maybe starting to want to have a serious relationship. I don't know, something like that. Um, if not, you're definitely like just moving towards the direction of your goals very confidently. But there's, there is an energy of like being on the move. Maybe you want to live in a tiny house. Maybe that's part of your balancing is like you want to like that minimalist living. I don't know if you have multiple houses, like maybe you just want to simplify. This is, this could be the energy of like simplification. Maybe you want to move somewhere. Uh, and then with the four of pentacles here, I'm just getting frugality. Like maybe, you know, you're trying to set a budget for yourself. This is definitely like very traditional, like New Year's kinds of a thing, but I'm just getting that it's coming so much from your heart. Like this isn't just society saying it's New Year's time, make your budget, you know, get to the gym. No, this is something that you want to do. You've wanted to do this even now. So, um, yeah, I do think that you are like, it's the energy of protecting your wealth and, uh, you know, maybe yeah, coming up with a budget, trying not to spend so much money, cutting back on your expenses again with the minimalism thing here. Um, yeah. So, um, over here I have money, work, and love because money and work are kind of, kind of the same, but kind of different. And I wanted to get a little bit of a different flavor to them. So I see again with money that you were trying to balance, balance something. You could have had some kind of a new start in money, but it's not too precarious. I feel like you had an, had options. Maybe you were considering a career change or you had to pick between two jobs or moving in one direction, moving in another direction, something like that with the two of pentacles here. But I do think, I mean, this, unlike a lot of 
I do think something was pulling you in one direction over another because I see this as your own energy, the familiar over here. I don't think it threw you too much for a loop. Um, but maybe you did, I don't know, there could have been a jolt. Actually, there was a jolt because look at you now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, I'm not. The Eight of Wands here, oh, if I can get it. Um, I do think that that this situation that, you know, had you choosing kind of between things, it did shake you up a little bit with the Eight of Wands. It could have involved some travel, some communication, feeling just scattered and all over the place, which is why maybe you want to come back home, reconnect with certain people. Um, I do feel like it was it was just a bit of a whirlwind. You did get kind of tossed around there um, insofar as, as money goes. Maybe whatever path that you chose had you investing money up front for something and it just kind of threw off your finances in a different way. But... Um, yeah, something like that, where, um, or maybe you had something happen, you know, out of the blue that caught, that you had to spend some money on, and so now things feel a little bit in disarray, and you're wondering whether or not you're, you know, you're going to come out all right, and in the future, and, and here's the thing, you guys, I'm not, this is the Five of Swords, this is not a great card, it is a card of, like, deception and defeat and all of that. Um, I, I don't think that, I think we change the future all the time. Even just by looking at it, I feel like we're changing the energy. And like I said, we're, we're getting some advice too, to kind of help change things, which is why we do things like this, right? You know, we want to be prepared. We want to have our best foot forward. Um, we all take some, you know, we all take one on the chin sometimes and that's okay. Um, so again, like here with the, with the five of swords, there could be people around you that don't have your best intentions at heart. I think that you're starting to come out of an energy of confusion. And when you do, you might see that somebody had led you astray with money in the past. And that could be what this all is. Maybe you were trying, maybe this is like an investment or something. You're looking to invest in something and you did and things are kind of crazy now. And when you look back, you're like, that wasn't really the greatest, right? With the five of swords here. Um, and you could have even had family members and stuff like, you know, I don't know, warning you about it or worried about it, but the Five of Swords breaks down to the Two of Swords and the Three of Swords. The Three of Swords is usually the energy of heartbreak, but these this these swords are kind of rising up here. Um, and the Two of Swords is like coming out of confusion, but she's pointing them at herself, so there is a danger of just like hurting yourself here. And And then with the Advice card, this is hazy energy. There's hazy communication, tricky communication around money. And so the advice card is, I think, to talk to someone that you trust. The Nine of Cups is about fulfillment. This is a person who kind of knows what he's doing. But um, so first of all, I think it's telling you to be wary of tricksters that don't show all their cards right with the curtain here and who has all these accolades and all these trophies. So that's how like this trickster energy might kind of show itself to you is like this person who is like, well, look at all that I've done. And so you should trust me. You want to invest in this and get a trophy too, right? Or something like that with money. Um, but this person is selfish and they're about themselves. And that's something that you need to be aware of is like, they're not all they're cracked up to be. They're not showing all their cards. And so I think another side to this is that if there's someone that you already know in your life and you see that person as successful, but you don't really know like how they necessarily did that or anything, um, you can approach that person and ask them for advice, especially if that person's a member of your family. But the, the key is knowing that person and trust. So, yeah, there's some kind of swindler, I just feel like, around you. And you need help seeing clearly because this person, I don't know, there's some kind of weird, maybe like Neptune, Mercury contact between the two of you where like you kind of can't see their speech clearly. You don't see the deceit. But people around you, I'm getting that people around you see it. So if you start hearing that like so-and-so is not right, this isn't such a good idea, 
really heed that advice and then seek out someone who is a professional maybe who is um you know established in some kind of a sense that you trust you pick the person that you're getting advice from don't like have somebody pop up out of the blue saying i have all these accolades you should totally listen to me um that's gonna that's gonna be not a great situation so with work we have the seven of cups the seven of pentacles and then the nine of pentacles so this is like maybe you didn't know really what you want to do for your job you're just kind of like you don't know if you're happy i'm just getting like that that sense here with money too with the two of pentacles like am i satisfied am i not satisfied is this all there is for me is there something better out there is this what i want to be doing um and again, I'm just getting like, maybe you're talking to somebody and they're not really helping you get clarity on it. I don't know that that person, whoever it is that you're talking to, I don't think that that person has your best intentions at heart. It could actually, it could be an older woman or man. It could be somebody like, I don't know, in your family or somebody that, I don't know. I'm just, I think you've been around someone who has given you bad advice when it comes to money and work. And this person comes off kind of nurturing and they come off like they know what they're doing and they come off like they've done this before, but really they haven't. They're out for their own, like they're a salesperson in the sense that they're like out for their own gain. They're not necessarily trying to help you find the thing that's going to work best for you. And I think now you are considering whether or not taking that person's advice or, you know, being in that amorphous kind of state whatever it is that you've already built like you're just considering whether or not that you want to keep heading in the same direction you know um if this is going to pay off for you if you're satisfied if this is all there is i'm just kind of hearing like is this all there is you know maybe this is all i can hope for there's just like a kind of a sad feeling and i think maybe that's maybe that is why you want to get into your body and take care of yourself and reconnect with people because i'm just kind of getting a sense of like is this all there is that's where you're at right now the good news is that moving into 2020, your your job, like work situation, is the Nine of Pentacles. You are abundant. You are independent. You are um, you are satisfied. You could be working for yourself. This could be like you you do start your own business. There's a sense of like self sovereignty, abundance, independence, using your skills towards something. People seeing you as an authority as Somebody like an up and coming, you know, this is a pre-empress card is what a lot of people call it. So yeah, like your advice is to take advice from people of oh, the six of pentacles. It's like, um, you know, if there's somebody above you, like find a mentor and I'm getting that advice with money too. I do think there's someone around you that with mentorship energy that can help mentor you. The thing is you have to pick your own mentor. And so yeah, there's definitely somebody that you can learn from. It actually might even be in some kind of an institutional setting because the six of pentacles, like this person's giving from a place of superiority. So this could be a boss. This could be like a professor, some kind of a university with the justice scales here. This could be like a lawyer if you need to ask for legal advice, like, you know, especially if you had something weird to happen with like an investment or something. Um... But yeah, definitely like find find a mentor or like connect with your boss. Ask them for their opinion on things. Maybe even talk to them about your your plans um, in moving forward. And they can kind of help guide you, especially if you like you're moving up in a company. This person maybe can help guide you in that in that arena. So looking at love, in the past we have temperance. Like I feel like you you were very cautious, um, you know, trying to take a balanced approach to things. Um, again with healing, you have a lot of temperance there, Sagittarian energy here. So maybe, maybe there is a person that like you see sometimes, and you guys hook up, and then 
Other times you don't see that person. Maybe you're unsure if this person's really right for you, if they're like good for you or not good for you. You don't quite trust them, but like it's comfortable and it works for you. Um, something like that. You also could have just been really focused on your studies. So I feel like it's, you know, maybe one of those two things. But I do think, I see that you're aware in love. Like you, like even if you are involved in someone, like you're protecting your heart, you're not really like getting that involved. It is what it is. You're calling that what it is. You know, it's like this energy of going back and forth between the cupcakes and the carrots, you know, where you're like, you know, I'm getting my needs met in this way, but then I'm making, I'm trying to make smart choices this way. And all the while you're trying to stay balanced and centered in yourself. You're not losing your head over love. But in the, your current situation, you could, this could be you or someone else. Like you could have somebody coming towards you with a love offer with the Knight of Pentacles. And this person means business. They want to, they want to move forward with you or you, this could be you like having your eye on somebody else and wanting, like you have a crush on someone, you have somebody in mind that you want to build with that you think could be the one, you know, and you want to move towards that person. You want them to see your value and see your worth and see what you've been working on. So either way right now, like this, whatever this is, like this is very stable energy. The Knight of pentacles moves slow and you might, it's like a lot might not be being said, Maybe it's just like you guys show each other how, like whoever it is, like you show, you're trying to show how you feel about that person with your actions, you know, like you're not saying it all the time. You just, somebody needs to borrow a pencil and like you, you give the pencil, you know, um, Hey, I was at the coffee shop this morning and I brought you a coffee. You know, it's like somebody's like just kind of showing that you're different to them through their actions. And it's like the beginning of a crush kind of energy. What's interesting is, um, Moving into 2020, we have the Page of Wands energy. So this is like, it is a crush. This could be the start of a sexual relationship. This could be a fling. Um, it, it's just like the start of spark of sexual passion. Because before it's like, I don't know, it's like the energy of beauty kind of being enamored with somebody, wanting to kind of step towards them. So you guys actually could start a sexual relationship. But the interesting thing about Page of Wands in this deck is that this Page of Wands is looking to this tree, this like... I don't, I don't know my trees. Like, is this an oak tree? I don't know. I want to say oak tree where it's like this oak tree is, you know, stable and it's growing and it's big. You can tell it's been around for a long time. So I do think it's like the spark of passion that could lead to something in the future that's like bigger, you know? Um, I mean, I can, I, if you're already with someone, like I can see in the past your, that your relationship has been really balanced and really healthy. You guys have a good balance of fun things and healthy things and that maybe you guys are moving towards your goals now in the future, but in maybe there's some traveling and some reigniting of passions and stuff um, happening moving into 2020. Um, and so your advice is the page of cups. I think it's just to relax, do what you love, go with the flow, flirt a little bit, you know, get yourself out there. Don't take yourself too seriously, you know, and just, I don't know. I'm just kind of getting go with the flow. Like life is life and, um, have a little fun, joke around. Like he's in his little jester costume and the page of cups is definitely romantic. Also, if there's an apology that needs to be said, you know, definitely say you're sorry and it'll, it could lead you to a better place. Um, be open about your feelings. Like just, this is just the energy of like open, fun, lighthearted, lighthearted energy, which I think you were trying to embrace in 2020 anyways with the temperance card and, and getting to, you know, this is just, I feel like you're, you're trying to focus on that anyways. So that's what I have for you guys. Pile number two, if that resonated, please like comment and subscribe. I love hearing your feedback. Um, honestly, it really does make my day when I see my phone light up with like a message from somebody. It just, I don't know. It just makes me so happy. So um, especially because so many of you guys are so loving and I appreciate all the love and support as well. So, um, okay. That was pile number two. Pile number three. Let's see what's going on for you guys in 2020. That rhymed. Make sure I'm still recording. Okay. Pile number three. Pile number three.
Whew. Pile number three. Okay. This is good. Yes. Pile number three. First of all, congratulations for choosing this pile. <laughs> um, things are looking really good for you guys in 2020. I just see a lot of strides. A lot, a lot of strides. Um, so first of all, um, I do have these mandalas. They have a brief thing on the back. I just, I don't like it when readers read things. So, um, but if you want, if you're into mandalas and you know, the, the power of vibrations that happens when we chant mandalas, um, then I'm going to go ahead and read this. I'm just going to read this. Okay. So you have the mandala of balance and healing. Yes. Um, the four quadrants of the Akshobhivara. Okay. Mandala represent the four elements converging to form a unity, healing imbalances through the universe and promoting harmony among all beings. Red represents all-knowing compassion. Green conveys action informed by wisdom. White symbolizes penetrating insight. And yellow represents the treasures of equanimity. Together, these forces combine to promote physical health and spiritual well-being. Okay. <clears throat> so, you guys are stepping into your own power and I do think that this group in particular has a spiritual mission and you're definitely taking strides towards that in 2020. I also see a lot of energy of authority, mastering your own domain, working really hard, mastering your own craft, having people look to you for advice, really being recognized as a leader, as a person of authority. You are a person that people want to learn from with, um, okay, so we have the Hierophant and the Emperor here in your overall 2020 energy. This, they're both major arcana. They're both, um, they both have the energy of the five, which is mastering humanity. This is both like, they both have patriarchal father type of energy and they do, they show it in different ways, but you have both of them here. So the Emperor is more, um, he's focused on everybody, the group, the collective. You could literally be moving into, you either could already be um, like a leader, a boss, a manager, a business owner, something like that, where you have to think about the group and make decisions, strategic decisions for that. That is going to come to you very naturally. You have a lot of wisdom um, coming from the past. You are, you're pretty unshakable when it comes to that. You are also in this Hierophant energy and the Hierophant is come it comes after the emperor in the journey through the major arcana and the hierophant is is a group leader is thinking about the group right um ultimately the the hierophant right the pope represents god's authority and spirit in in a form on earth but ultimately the paradox of this card is that it's just the pope is just a person as well um but it, he represents channeling and grounding divine knowledge into structures for people and so um and but the but the pope and the not this deck but in another deck because i'm i i read this Jungian book i really like carl Jung, but um they talk about in this card the the pope has his eyes on the two people in front of him i don't think this one does in this card no still looking out the emperor is also looking out um but there is that energy of like really focusing on individuals you're focused on the group and you're focused on individuals. And I do think that you're trying to use whatever authority or leadership position that you have in order to ground spiritual concepts into the world, but not so directly. Like, I think that you're just, you're trying to create like a safe place for people. If that makes any sense. But a lot, a lot of success and a lot of recognition for you in the future. And then the Eight of Pentacles is all about this is about mastering your craft. It's about craftsmanship. And it's also about like doing things that help the community. You can see the community in the background here. Like, you know, maybe you do take time away. Maybe you go to a seminar or to a workshop. You master a different part of, you know, you, you bring something else in to what you're doing. And that really bolsters whatever it is you're doing. This is just such powerhouse energy here. Excuse me, I gotta take a drink. All right, the balance and harmony in that card, you are balanced and harmonious in yourself in 2020, and that is helping you to bring balance to the world around you. So over here, I have um, money, work, and love, um, and I wanted to separate money and work because I just see them a little bit differently. So I think 
in the past you had just kind of started to come into some money on your own <clears throat> um started to have a little bit of money that you didn't really know what to do with. You know, my, how am I going to invest this? How am I going to make this money work for me? Um, and and now you're still really reflecting on that. Um, both the Chariot and the Hermit are major arcana cards. So I do think money was a big, it has been a big thing for you in the past and then um, in, in the future. But you're definitely showing maturity about it in the future. We move from the seven to the nine. Um, so in the past, I think this is like the chariot is such an energy of breaking off on your own, moving forward in the direction that you want to go, trying to um, balance your own psyche. It's the king on the move, right? It's a young king on the move. So I think you had just started to, you know, probably make your own money um, and not, not make your own money. I mean, you don't have to be young, but um, you could have like started to have some success here. And you're just trying to figure out where you kind of want to plant yourself, right? Because the young king on the move, like, he's not at his castle, right? Um, you could literally have been traveling around a lot. Or you could have your money in multiple places. And so you want to you want to figure out, like, how to consolidate it, how to make it work for you with the hermit card here. So right now, I see that you're reflecting. You could be reading... Um, something, it's like outside of society. Like, you want to pull your money out? Why am I hearing that? Pull your money out? I don't know if that's resonating for some of you. There could be something, I guess, that maybe you want to invest in. Um, maybe you do want to start your, maybe you want to start your own business. Maybe you even do want to, like, downsize your home or something like get a tiny house or something like that so that you can take that money and then like invest in your own business or something I don't know that might resonate for some of you but I just see a maturing like you are being very reflective about what what you're reflecting on your goals you're doing probably a lot of research with the hermit card the Virgo energy there um maybe you've stopped asking your family for advice some of you um, cause the chariot card is the moon, which is the mother. It's also the forest house and that like home kind of energy. You could have just moved out of your own home or something to do with your house. Maybe you want to, I don't know. There's something to do with your house and buying a house. Maybe you're trying to buy a house or sell a house. And then you're thinking about, well, what can I do with that money to really make it work for me? Am I going to invest? Am I going to buy another house? Or maybe you want to use that money for something else. So maybe you want to like, you know, buy a, a tiny house and just live on some land for now. And that way you can use that money to invest in something else. I know that's very specific and I can't imagine that that's going to resonate for everybody, but I just, no, it's out there now. Um, but in the future we have the 10 of cups. I mean, this is, you're going to, I think whatever you do with your money, Water is the energy of money, not necessarily investments. So your money, I do think you're going to, you're going to have a lot of money. I, I do think that you're, this is going to be successful, whatever it is that you're doing. You, you strike me as a reflective person and actually I feel woefully underqualified to even like be talking about money with you. So um, <clears throat> I do think that you're going to see an abundance of money in 2020 and your advice for money is the Knight of Cups. I mean, it's just, yeah, taking action. Maybe it, it is moving money. I mean, he's moving with his cup of water. And like I just said, water, you know, represents money, right? We keep our money in banks, right? Like river bank, the current of the economy. I mean, money itself is like the energy of water. So you might have to like give a little to make a little, something like that with the, the river. Because the, the, another thing, this might, I'm just going to throw out what I know about this card because this might make sense to some of you. Is like the, the thing about the Knight of Cups is he's the least imaginary person in the, the, the court card of cups. So it's like be creative, but also be smart. And with the river here, it's the smallest river that's in the, the water cards. This is like the smallest river that is shown. So it's like, I don't know, something. There also could be obstacles here, but be confident and... Um, there's something about moving, moving your money somewhere. 
maybe it's like a smaller investment. Like if you're thinking about investing in something and it's like, well, can I, should I invest in this small, this stock for the smaller company or bigger one? I think it's smaller. Anyways, do, um, this is like, you're responsible for your own life choices. Now's a good time to remind you that this is not a pile that needs to be reminded of that, but whatever, I just said it. Um, so with work, I think that in the past you had some disappointments and it, work was really keeping you up at night. This is the energy of anxiety, of staying up a lot. Maybe work was on your mind a lot and you were really looking for a new day for yourself and waiting for that new day to dawn. Um, but you thought that you kind of had to like overcome some, some obstacles. I don't want to focus too much on that because now you're showing up as the 10 of pentacles. Again, I think I see a lot of success in this pile and pentacles, like I just said, it's the energy of, in, of investment. So I think that you, you have, even if you don't have a lot of money, like you still have a lot of assets and it's good to just look around you and take stock of the things that you do have. Like you probably do have a good job, um, that maybe you work from home with the 10 of pentacles there. Uh, maybe you really like the people that you work around. Maybe your job, like you have a very secure job. You know, for a fact, your job is not going anywhere. It's something that you have, you've built over time you've had a lot of success you've gotten it to a place where you don't have to worry about it so so much as it's definitely seen a lot of improvement we went from the nine of swords to the ten of pentacles this is exponential improvement this is it's also a place where it's abundant it's fruitful that you know that there's place for you to grow here and there actually is place for you to grow because moving into 2020 you have the hierophant this is stepping up into a leadership position like we were just talking about over here because hierophant came out as your overall energies too right and the hierophant like i just said is somebody who, like, they are, they look out for the collective, but they also see people as individuals. So you could be stepping up into a, more of a leadership role, into a teaching role. You could be training other people to do the job that you're doing. Um, or you could just be managing people. I don't know. I just wanted to say this could happen over the internet or something because, like, this person's eyes are closed. Like, they can't really maybe see the people in front of in front of them. There's something about teaching and, like, sharing what you know, but from a place of power, from a leadership position. <clears throat> Definitely with the emperor and the hierophant. You could, like, be opening your own consulting business. Because I just, you have the energy of a business owner over here as well. So you could be consulting on whatever it is that you're doing from now. Um, and the advice for that is to know that you, with the seven of... Um, cups this is the energy of neptune it's like first of all things aren't always what they seem and i, I don't know why i want to pull this back to the knight of cups like with that weird small investment thing i don't know um things aren't always what they seem and that sounds like an ominous warning but you have really good cards here so i'm not necessarily thinking that but it's just like i think if you Things aren't always what they seem is what I want to say. The energy of Neptune. It's like, use your intuition. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let me just say what I know about this. Um, so Neptune, right? Rules Pisces. It rules. Um, and again, you have like spiritual energy coming in. So I don't know if there's like some spiritual thing, spiritual practice that you um, uh, could could be drawing upon that will help make things clearer for you. Like maybe, maybe this is saying meditate, clear your head. Um, you're really, you are a meditative person. So if things get too crazy and you're trying to make these really big life decisions and you notice that you're in this anxiety kind of energy with the nine of swords, just to remember like those practices that you, you, you know how to calm yourself and center yourself. So it's like, just remember that, um, so that things aren't quite so messy up here in your head. Um, the 12th house is where things go to dissipate, things go to merge with the all. So there definitely is some kind of collective energy here with Jupiter. And like, well, I say Jupiter because Neptune being Pisces, Pisces and Vedic is also ruled by Jupiter. Um, it's also like be selfless, I think, because um, Neptune and the energy of Pisces, like Pisces especially like having a son in Pisces is something like that that person could struggle with is, is identity and finding yourself. So it's like, if you not think your advice is to like, not think so much about yourself. <laughs> that sounds so strange to say, but like in your job, if you approach this, like again, the Hierophant, you have the Hierophant energy twice here. It's the energy of 
helping. You know, it's spiritual. It's like helping. So if you if you're trying to help, it's going to lead you to the best possible outcome. Like, try to help people see clearly. Maybe you also have the emperor here, so it's like don't be entirely self selfless. Like you you definitely have to think about yourself too. I don't like these. I don't like the advice things because I just want to remind people that they're responsible for their own life choices. <clears throat> okay, I'm losing my voice here. Talk less, listen more. Maybe that's the thing. Okay. In love. Interesting. We have the three of pentacles, the page of pentacles, and the three of wands. You could have options now. You could be like kind of considering people. Maybe you know these people from the workplace um, or they've been in your life for kind of a minute, but there is one person that's kind of standing out to you. And... I don't know, I think this person is probably, there's like a sweetness and an innocence to them, but they're also like really talented. They could be new in your field if you know, I'm getting work energy from this pile overall. Like, like you've spent a lot of time in developing yourself in that sphere. And so I think you know a lot of people from that sphere as well. Um, I don't know, this person, it's like, there's something about them that's, maybe they're like, I don't know something about them where like, do you have your shit together? Like maybe you even want to help them or mentor them in some way. You have a lot of mentoring kind of energy. You should be sharing what you know um, with me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so the page of pentacles, like from the three of pentacles, you're moving to the page of pentacles. So I do think like either you make a love offer or somebody makes a love offer to you and you guys kind of start, like maybe you start building a relationship with, with someone. Um... I mean, pages are also children, and I'm just noticing that it's under the Ten of Pentacles. Maybe maybe you feel like you're building a family with someone. Maybe you are building a family, because the Three of Pentacles is also about building something, working together, and grounding the spiritual into the material world. So maybe, maybe this is someone you met from a spiritual community or something. Maybe you guys have a relationship, and you're thinking more about marriage. Like they're in like kind of a temple, especially in the the original Rider Waite deck, they're in a temple. <clears throat> yeah, interesting. But yeah, with the Page of Pentacles, this is going to solidify, and, and, and this is like kind of the energy of now. So maybe you're already kind of focusing in on somebody that you like, or they're focusing in on you. But I don't know that this relationship is going to work out, i got to say, um, because there's a lot of independent energy here. I do think that you're working a lot on your career. You're making strides in your career and with your money. The reason I say that is because we noticed the tower in the background. That's making me think of the tower card in um, like with the major arcana. Because And from that, the tower is on fire and the king and queen are like being flung out of it. And then in the future energy, you have the three of wands. And the three of wands is like... You have the support of other people, but you have to move out on your own. It's still an independent energy. Um, but being Wands energy, I don't know if this, honestly, this could be stepping out on and having more than one sexual partner. I think that you would be doing that, but it could be your other person. I don't, I don't know. Um, but where it's like, yeah, exploring your options, kind of looking what's out, what else is out there. And with it being Wands energy, it's more of that sexual fire passion energy. Um, drawing your ships in. You also could be just manifesting something. Or there could be... I'm just noticing this, like... Something comes in to, to destroy your plans. They're like, look, this person's, like, casting this, and this is going right for the little map here. So, like, whatever you think is going to happen in your love life now might not be what happens, especially, like, if you're on the cusp of a new relationship. And I know that's sad to say, and... Again, like, we can always change the future, right? And, um, and, sorry if you can hear my cat scratching. Um, and I even think, like I said this to pile number two, I even think just looking at the future, we can kind of change things. So I hope that doesn't make you sad. I don't necessarily think it makes you too sad. If it does, I don't, let me not, I don't know. So your advice is the six of wands. This is the energy of victory and being on your way. Like, understanding that you're on your way, you're still taking applications. I think this is saying, like, 
making yourself the best person that you can be is going to bring in your partner and it might not be the time for your partner right now like i do again i think this group is really focused on work on their own individual success building themselves up in some way i do think you have a lot of admirers but i'm just getting that um i'm i don't i i, I this is how it wants to come out your queen is not here yet like He's got his laurel thing on. I'm seeing this as like his queen's crown and he's like trying and a lot of people are vying for your attention because you do have this like energy of success around you. It's very attractive. I do think you're an attractive person too, but um, like you're on your way and, and, and something really good is coming for you. But I think, I do think you're supposed to be self-focused now. So maybe this is just saying, you know, have some fun date around, you know, enjoy your life and know that you're manifesting something and that you're on your way to that thing. But like, maybe the time is not now. So I'm sorry if that's not what you wanted to hear pile number three, but that's kind of what I'm getting. So that's what I have for you guys. If that resonated, please do like, comment and subscribe. Congratulations on being successful people doing the thing. Um, and I honestly, I love reading your guys' comments. So if you feel comfortable commenting, just know that it makes my day. So um, even if it's something as simple as like, hey, um, thank you or whatever. Um, I like hearing from you guys. So thank you so much, pile number three. And I hope to see you around here again. Bye.